Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. A pleasure to be on. Yusuf al-Qardawi passed away at the age of 96. He was one of the most well-known religious figures in the Muslim world, Dr. Shabir, and his contributions to the Muslim world are tremendous. Um, he has, just in terms of books itself, he has written more than 100 books. And Dr. Shabir, you have some of his books with you. I understand yes. that you have many of his books on your bookshelves at home. Yes, I do. And I just pulled a few uh, just for illustration. Um, and, and how to refer to him respectfully, it's not so very, uh, I mean, he has many titles. So which one to use? We can say Dr. Al-Qaradawi. We can say Allama, as some of the, book, uh, some of the books uh, title him. Uh, Allama meaning a great scholar, not just simply an alim or a scholar. So Sheikh uh, Yusuf al-Qaradawi is a very common way of referring to a scholar. Uh, but he has been dubbed uh, Allama, which means uh, a great scholar. Mm -hmm. in, in any case, um, uh, what, what, here's one of his books. Uh, as you can see, it's a hefty volume uh, entitled Fiqh al uh, which means understanding uh, of, of charity, uh, the, the rules regarding charity, the obligatory aspect of charity in the Islamic law. So he goes into a lot of discussion, uh, bringing uh, together um, ancient uh, learning uh, combined with a, a good understanding of modern uh, society and, and economics. Mm -hmm. And it's and, a hard topic and, and Muslims are always asking questions about zakah. Yes. So it's great that he wrote that book. Yes. Now this uh, book is uh, published in, um, in Malaysia. Wow. In Malaysia. So halfway around the world mm -hmm. from us uh, where, you know, we, we don't think of Malaysia as uh, a predominantly uh, English-speaking country, but, uh, you know, Malaysia is advancing in English. And, uh, and this is, uh, it's interesting that they have paid attention to his books and they're, uh, you know, translating and publishing the book in that country. Now, this uh, is entitled Economic Security in Islam. And uh, this one was translated and published in India. Mm -hmm. In India. Mm -hmm. So again, we can see the widespread influence that he has had. Uh, among Muslims who speak English. Hmm. And uh, this one is entitled Approaching the Sunnah, uh, Comprehension and Controversy. And uh, this one was co-published uh, both in London and Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, again, uh, without going into uh, all of the details of these books, it is very clear that Dr. Yusuf al Qaradawi has uh, been very influential. His books have been translated, at least I know of these English translations. Uh, uh, maybe there are translations in other European languages as well. And uh, it is clear that uh, he is widely uh, received among Muslims. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Shabir, I have uh, probably his most popular book, um, and it's in English. It says, The Lawful and Prohibited in Islam. Um, and so I wanted to show this book because many people know of this book, right? And, many yes. pe and, and this is in English. I mean, he, he wrote it in Arabic, but this is an English version. Yes. And it's, it's very nicely published. Um, I believe it's published in London, Dr. Shibir. Yes, and by Darul Bir Society, yes. Darul Bir Foundation. Yes. And uh, there is an interesting history behind this book, um, at least the English translation. The English translation was uh, published decades ago. and. Um, uh, sold, sold widely, and that's that was my first introduction to this, uh, to the book and to that scholar. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, later on, uh, Darul Bir Foundation in uh, in the United Kingdom reprinted this uh, edition that you have held in your hands, uh, and uh, it, they reprinted it for free distribution. Mm -hmm. Now you can see a hefty book like that often is not available for free distribution. A, yes. lo a lot of pamphlets and smaller booklets have been published to be sure for free distribution, uh, but for a book this size to be printed for free distribution is remarkable. And it shows the great interest uh, that people have had in um, reading and publicizing uh, this particular book. And we could say perhaps more generally, uh, the works of that great scholar. Mm -hmm. Dr. Shabir, what do you think is Yusuf al-Qaradawi's intellectual legacy? Well, he, um, he has done a lot uh, for, um, for Muslims in general, and for me in particular, to help us to understand uh, some of the goals of the Islamic Sharia and, and the way in which uh, we should approach subjects. Like one of the things, for example, he pointed out in the same book, al -Hala, uh, the, mm -hmm. which is entitled in Arabic al-halal wal haram mm -hmm. fil islam, the lawful and the prohibited in Islam, is that he has shown, for example, that things are basically considered to be permissible until you find a proof that they're not permissible. Mm -hmm. 
so, and, and this is classical. In Islamic law, it is well recognized and is even stated in Arabic in our classical law books. Al-Ashlu fil Ashia al-Ibaha. That's how the, they said it in Arabic, which means literally uh, the original principle in things is permissibility. Hmm. Uh, so uh, that, that frees up our minds a lot it, because if we approach something, we're wondering, oh, this is, the, is this halal or is it haram? Is it permissible or impermissible? Uh, so the, the basic predis predisposition is that it, it is permissible mm -hmm. until, unless you find. Is there a verse of the Quran that says this is prohibited? Is there a hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that says that this is prohibited? Uh, is there uh, something from the reason that would say that this is uh, prohibited mm -hmm. that, or, or should be prohibited? Uh, so if there is no um, factor that will uh, give rise to the ruling that this is prohibited, then the basic thing is that it is uh, permissible. So mm -hmm. it's not the other way around. Yeah, so it's, it means that Islam has a natural fit in society exactly. because people are inclined as a society and as individually towards Halal, towards good. This towards is what good, our society yeah. is like. Exactly. And just like the Quran says, uh, you know, the good things have been declared to be permissible for mm -hmm. you. So that's the basic presupposition. Whereas if you start with the other uh, presupposition, you can see how, how difficult life would be. Because if we ask, can we eat bananas? If you start with the presupposition that, okay, it must be impermissible mm -hmm. until you can find proof that it is permissible, then we would have to find a verse of the Quran or a hadith that says you can eat bananas, and and uh, and perhaps you wouldn't find that. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and then you can multiply that for a million things. Uh, but uh, it, it's simpler to understand that things are basically permissible until you can find that something is impermissible. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the proof that that would render it so. Um, now, because of this factor and some other factors that he has mentioned in the introduction to that book, Al-Halal wal haram fil Islam, the lawful and prohibited in Islam, in his book, he was able to delineate some things as being permissible, which uh, perhaps others might frown upon. Hmm. They, and, and, and they might think, no, 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 that was impermissible and he's just making it permissible. But but, but he is very clear that he's not going to make something permissible if it, was, if it is forbidden in the laws of God. Uh, but he's saying that it's equally a crime uh, to uh, switch around either way. If God has made something prohibited, it is a crime for us to declare it permissible. And, but it's also equally a crime if God has made something permissible, if we now arrogate to ourselves the authority to declare it forbidden. Who are we to speak mm -hmm. over God when God has permitted something uh, and we're going to declare it to be forbidden? So he is very careful in, in walking a fine line between uh, you know, knowing what is permissible and what is not. And because he has uh, walked this fine line and because he was able to declare some things permissible that people might have thought to be forbidden, uh, he, uh, the, the book was lampooned. Some people uh, refer to it as uh, the the permitted and the permitted, mm -hmm. instead of the lawful and the unlawful, mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they lampoon it as the, uh, the lawful and the lawful. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, because in the Arabic, it's called al halal wal haram fil Islam. Uh, so some people say, oh, that's the book, uh, that's the al halal wal halal fil Islam, mm -hmm. <laughs> meaning that everything is halal. Yes. But, but that's not what, that was not his intention, and that's definitely what he did, not what he did. He's clear that he, some things are prohibited. And he maintains that so he, he's not going to change the law of God, mm -hmm. uh, either to make the permitted impermissible or to make the, um, the impermissible now permitted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, Dr. Shabir, what do you think are some of the weaknesses in Yusuf al-Qardawi's approach? Um, well, you know, I, the, the, if, the one thing that I, that I find uh, disagreeable is his... Um, is his allowance for uh, suicide bombings within uh, Palestine. The way he justifies that is uh, by saying that, well, you know, there are an oppressed people and they have the right to fight for their freedom. Mm -hmm. And because they are weak and they do not have the tools and powers of their oppressors, uh, then they can use whatever means uh, is there at their disposal, even if it means, uh, you know, being in, an, in, in, in a suicide act. Um, uh, no, of course, we can see the repercussions of that, uh, especially in uh, 2001 when, you know, the airplanes uh, rammed into the Twin Towers in the United States. 
And, and we can see other instances of suicide bombings, how ugly this can, can become by people justifying things. Uh, of course, he probably didn't mean all of this. Um, and definitely he didn't mean all of this. But um, uh, the, one, one can take a stretch from, from fatwas like that. And, um, and so that, that is something that I find disagreeable. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I find great strengths uh, in the ways in which he looks at the uh, needs of Muslims in, um, in situations like Canada, where Muslims live as minorities. They may need to buy a house, for example. How can you get around uh, the mortgage problem and so on? So uh, he has made a lot of great advances and shown that uh, we can uh, renew our thought in, in the religion and to show that Islam is practicable in our modern times. Thank you for sharing that, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. On behalf of Let the Quran Speak, I want to say thank you. You've helped us become the most widely watched Muslim TV show in Canada. I want to appeal to you to continue to support us. You can visit our website, quranspeaks.com. We also accept e-transfers to iGive at quranspeaks.com. And we're now on Patreon, so you can make a monthly contribution. May God bless you and your loved ones today and always.